This is Kate Parker here to discuss Arizona State's football season. Um, it ended in sort of a disappointing fashion. We were really expecting ASU to put up a good year, have high hope for maybe getting to a good bowl bid, but instead, ASU went six and seven, losing to West Virginia in the Cactus Bowl in the final game of the season. I think. One thing that really attributed to having such high expectations was they had nine starters returning on defense with a basically senior offensive line and a a quarterback that was supposed to be a strong arm, and some people had him as a Heisman contender. None of that really worked out. But now we're going to take a look ahead at what next season has in store for ASU. Uh, over the off season, ASU lost their offensive coordinator Mike Norvell, who left to Memphis. Mike Norvell was a coordinator under Todd Graham for five years, four of which were at ASU. With his, at ASU, Norvell led an explosive offense during his tenure. Uh, they were number one in drives per game, averaging fourteen point two. They were number two in points per drive with two point five four five. They were number three in lowest three and out percentage per drive. 25.6%, and they were number three in plays per game, 78.3. Or if you like the more uh, rugged stats, they were number five in yards per game with 459.2, and number five in rushing yards per game with 187.7. So Norvell really, with the spread offense, he was able to use ASU's personnel really well, and I think he's going to be a great fit at Memphis, and that was a, that's a good coach for them. So who did ASU get instead of Mike Novell? Well, we got Chip Lindsey, who was the offensive coordinator at Southern Mississippi. And he run the same kind of off spread offense that Mike Novell ran at ASU. During, at Southern Miss, he, his offense was tied for number 12 in the country in points per game with 40.6 points last season. And also number 12 in passing yards per game with 329.7. Lindsey ran the same sort of spread system, as I mentioned, and he, quote, said he expects to run the same schemes and tailor it to fit the personnel at ASU. As mentioned already, Lindsey called the shots in ASU's offense for the, at the Cactus Bowl, which led, which was a 43-42 to Virginia, West Virginia loss, but we really got a taste of Lindsey's willingness to pass, where we threw for 418 yards and 102 rushing yards, with 23 first downs. But always a big question in sports when you when you lose as ugly as ASU did last season is, what what do we have in store for next season? Well, I can tell, tell you it, it might not be promising. It looks, looks sort of more like a building year. On offense, we're losing four of the five starting offensive linemen, including four other starters, who one of which was the quarterback, of course, Mike Bukovici. And we're losing five starters on defense. But I do have some players that we should really look out for, and they're going to be some big-name players for us next season. Kareem Orr, who was a freshman All-American honorable mention and snagged six interceptions for the Sun Devils in 2015. Our running back from last season, Demario Richard, will be a redshirt junior next season, coming off a 1,000-yard season with seven touchdowns. And lastly, I expect something good to come out of our quarterback situation. Uh, a little bold prediction, just sort of speculation out of what I've seen and heard. Ultimately, I believe the job will be given to Bryce Perkins, who will be a redshirt freshman next year, because he is a perfect fit for the spread system. He is 6'3", 201 pounds, uh, just a, a great quarterback out of Chandler High School. He's actually the younger brother of UCLA's second-team all-conference running back, Paul Perkins. What may come as a surprise to some people after such a horrible season for ASU in 2015 is that ASU has the 23rd-ranked recruiting class this offseason so far. We have 18 total commits, um, nine of which are four-star recruits. Four of those 18 are ESPN 300 recruits, and some notables are Enkeel Harry, 
the number one wide receiver, and Chase Lucas, the number 14 wide receiver, both from Chandler High School locally, and Cole Coble, the number two offensive center from Los Osos High School in California. And as always, ASU likes to target some JUCO players. We have Tim White from this season and Jalen Strong. Everybody loved Jalen Strong. He came out of JUCO. This season, we are pulling in Maurice Chandler, the number two cornerback from Northeastern Oklahoma A&M. Jamarcus Rhodes, the number three cornerback from Kilgore College in Texas. Douglas and Suttle, number two defensive end from Victor Valley College, Florida. And Christian Hill, the number three defensive end from Glendale Community College in Arizona. And all of those, again, are for the ESPN JC50 commits. And some of these new recruits are really going to have to fill in the void that was left by our senior offensive line. And I believe those people will be Cole Coble, who is going to have to step up. Tyson Rising, who is the number eight offensive tackle in JUCO from Ventura College in California. And A.J. McCollum, the number 10 offensive center, the number one, off, sorry, number one offensive center from, in JUCO from City College of San Francisco.